Hi there. Lisa has complained about the internet connection on this newly built PC. Black and gold components, you've probably seen it in a recent build video on this channel. For some reason, the wired connection is extremely spotty. Uh, in fact, I think it's been relying for the most part on Wi-Fi, not wired LAN. And that's a big problem, especially for an avid gamer like my wife. Having a strong internet connection is extremely important. So I'm gonna see What's going on here? And you can see occasionally an ethernet tab pops up, but then it disappears just as quickly, almost like nothing is actually connected. I swapped out this cable thinking it's the potential culprit with a known working one, yet the symptom still persists. And yet on the server side, we're not seeing any connection at all. So even though I've got the ethernet cable wired directly into her PC from the wall, my switch is showing that nothing is actually connected. And yes, in case you're wondering, I have installed LAN drivers. I've tried even reinstalling different versions of the same LAN driver to no avail. That leaves us then with this guy. I've switched over to a wide angle lens. This is gonna throw off proportions big time. Look how large my hand is compared to my head. This is this is really strange. <laughs> the things on the corner of the screen are getting massive. Uh, but this is a very tight space and I imagine the issue is gonna be somewhere in here. So uh, this is the plate where the ethernet cable attaches to Lisa's PC. From here it runs to the switch that you just saw. Of course, that's how we get internet. I'm using Spectrum by the way, which uh, I'm not a huge fan of, but it's the only option I have here. So again, we know it's probably not the cable. We've already ruled this out. But oh yeah, this uh, this keystone, which attaches to this wall plate, does not look good. And this is what I was beginning to suspect. We're not getting a proper connection here. Now, if you recall in this video here, I actually attached all of these keystones throughout this house myself. Unfortunately, I couldn't drop the Cat6. You had to have a, a low voltage company come in and drop those. You have to be certified. I think it's a county level thing. And so I never would have passed inspection if I had just done it myself. So I had to pay somebody to do that. We marked on the floor plans where we wanted all of them dropped. And then I attached the keystones. These keystones, by the way, were all checked by me with my own eyes. Cause I didn't want to have to undo anything if I noticed one of the keystones was bad, if it looked like that there. So I made sure that those were all good. I think, however, when we hired the same company to attach all of the wall plates, which includes in several cases, especially in this office here, that Cat6 plate, they probably damaged, I think more than one. This one, this one's clearly damaged. But there are a few others in this office alone that I think are also damaged. And I want to check those out very quickly. So this is the corner of the office where I have our racing sims installed. One for my son, you saw this in an earlier video, and one for myself. And I have never been able to successfully connect a Cat6 cable to this port over here. And I want to see if the same reason is to blame. It looks like that, oh yeah, that port is totally trash. That's even worse than the front one. Wow. Yeah, so uh, it looks like whoever installed the wall plates definitely did a number on some of these keystones, which sucks because now I've got to take off the plate, swap the keystones out with other keystones and then remount them. And that includes like splicing the wires and stuff too, which I'm getting better at, but yeah, I'm still kind of a networking nub. So we'll get those taken care of in this video for sure. We'll also install this UNAS Pro. I'm really excited about this. This is the latest product from Unify. This is gonna fit perfectly into our current server setup. Uh, and this will provide uh, additional storage that we can manage through Unify software, which I already have integrated with all of my other products, my security system, etc. cetera. So uh, this makes a lot of sense. It's gonna be a nice organic fit and we'll play around with it a bit as well. I'm not really sure how to even set something like this up, but we're, we're gonna try. We've also some other housekeeping things to take care of. This desk is a bit dirty, I'm gonna be cleaning that, but also the wiring underneath this desk. So uh, I've been working on it slowly but surely. This is just an Ikea setup here, if you're wondering, just some Ikea cabinets, uh, and then a, uh, it's kind of like a particle board-ish desk. I mean, it, it's not super strong, but you can see I've got these really beefy uh, little L-shaped arms that I've routed into studs, and uh, these can support like 200 pounds a piece. So this desk isn't going anywhere, uh, but now I've got to mount some of the heavier things underneath the desk, including these AC adapters for the monitors, uh, and I've got some super, super sticky Gorilla Tape that we're gonna use to hopefully keep these propped up. And then we can cable manage the rest of this. Vacuum, God, we need a vacuum. What on earth went on back here? This is like a freaking war zone. And uh, that should clean up the Mac, Apple, whatever, the gross part of the office. I know a lot of you think this is gross, it's okay. And same goes for my setup, don't mind me, just uh, AFKing some sand crabs. I've got, uh, yeah, a couple of these AC adapters that are just kind of dangling. I have also been having some personal issues with my own monitors, Pixio 277 Primes. I've been using these 27 inch 1440p IPS panels for several years. I've never really had the 
urge to upgrade to 4K until very recently. You'll see, we'll fix that in this video. Uh, but this one on the right has been flickering on and off occasionally. Sometimes it intensifies and it just stays off for several minutes at a time, which is definitely no bueno while I'm gaming or editing. So yeah, I don't know what the deal is with this office and things breaking over time, compiling. I need to just knock them all out in a single video. I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. I hope you'll stay with me. Are you sitting on a gaming PC without an activated copy of Windows? Forget 100 plus dollar retail keys. Instead, snag an OEM Windows 10 or 11 key for a fraction of the price to unlock the full potential of the OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and easily activate with your key under the activation tab within Windows settings. And be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. First things first, let's fix these ethernet ports. I think I can do this without turning off the breaker. I don't recommend that you do it this way. I would definitely cut power to this uh, to these power outlets here just to be on the safe side, but I don't want to kill power to other things in my office currently. So I'm just gonna, oh, God, they torque the heck out of these flathead screws. You'll see as we remove this cover here, there isn't much we need to do on this side. Just need to remove the two screws that are holding this keystone in place. Wow, there's not a lot of slack to play with here though. I am not a fan of that. This is literally all the slack I have. This box here was what I used for the original installs back when the house was being built. And I happen to still have a few left over. Here's the old keystone jack. You can see that one of those pins has been uh, where it should not be. And here is the new one that is looking so much better. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the second broken keystone as well. This one here behind the racing sims. This one thankfully has provided us with a bit more slack. Also, I'm gonna do my best to uh, clean this up this time around. This install was pretty rough the first time I was a nub. You can see here, this one is completely toast. I, I'm not sure, like this just looks like somebody hates their job. I don't know how you trash a keystone this badly. Like if you just shove like a flathead screwdriver in it or something, Kind of frustrating, but uh, we'll get a brand new one in there. This looks, again, a lot better. I don't have a punch tool, which I know is super cringe to you networking guys out there. I apologize for that. I'm just gonna trim these up a tad now. Everything looks good. So now we can get this screwed down. We'll get the cover plate on and then we'll power the system back up and give it a go. Aha, would you look at that? We have the ethernet symbol. Let's run a quick speed test to be on the safe side and see where our, yep, oh yeah, this is so much better. So my theoretical maxes are actually 500. So 500 down, about 25, I believe, up. And we are pretty much saturating that on this machine now, all wired up. That is mission accomplished. And here is the second one, all rewired, admittedly much cleaner looking now as well. Next, and switching over to a different microphone for this voiceover, it's time to tackle something I've been wanting to since first moving into this new construction, server closet ventilation. Now, as of now, the only thing actively moving air is the exhaust fan we installed near the ceiling, but uh, this is a small room, and uh, it's not even really a room, it's just a closet. And with the doors to that closet closed, fresh, cool air struggles to move in. So my plan is to cut holes and mount these cheap vents I purchased on Amazon for about 20 or 30 bucks. Sounds easy enough. I'll just need to remove the both of these doors and make the cuts outside to prevent sawdust from flying literally everywhere. I drilled out a few holes around the corners of the outlines I'd made for each with a bit just large enough to allow the blade of my jigsaw to fit through, and then made angled cuts to oppose ends to free up even more space for a clean second pass. My hope was that my angles would be close to 90 apiece, and I'm surprised to say that's actually how it turned out. The jigsaw is one of my favorite woodworking tools for its versatility, and in this case, portability because it's also battery powered, and it cut through the door like butter, leaving clean lines that only required minor sanding. Not that you'd be seeing much of these cuts once the vents are installed. Speaking of, once those are attached on both ends, it was as easy as repositioning the doors inside of their respective hinges and inserting their pins. I know the black screws look a bit odd. I don't have any white ones at the moment, but it's a simple swap for a later day. Next on the agenda was the UNAS Pro. I was super giddy about this. Couldn't wait any longer. Unify was super cool to send one out as early as they did because this product is pretty much brand new as of time of filming. In fact, I'd have used this sooner for all of my video footage in place of Polaris. Again, had it existed when we first built the rack a few months ago. This thing sporting seven bays, all hot swap, of course, a small touchscreen for general info and diags, and even a 10 gig port. It's going to look so nice once it's paired with all of our other unified gear. But first, we've got to do something about this sag. <laughs> yeah, 
I know the angle's not really doing it justice. A couple of rack rails should do the trick though. You know, the more we add to this setup, the heavier it becomes. I have the heaviest stuff at the bottom to keep it, well, not top heavy, but things are adding up and I'm not really a huge fan of everything being held up by pairs of ears. Once the UNS Pro slid into position, we can hook up power and ethernet, populate the bays and fire it right up. Ubiquiti included three 16 terabyte hard disk drives to get things started for us. And I plan to set up a separate partition for general files here, photos and videos outside of work. So essentially running two different storage solutions on the same physical NAS. I'm not sure if that's possible within Unify software yet, but we'll get to it. Once we're finished on the hardware side, by the way, it is as simple as opening the Unify app and adopting the new device. It's literally one click, super easy. One of the reasons why I continue to use these products. Last on the agenda was sorting out the cable nightmares under the desks in the office. Of course, getting these AC adapters mounted. And the real trick to this is using a special kind of Gorilla double-sided adhesive. It's thicker than normal double-sided tape. Tape. And it's important that you use something pretty robust for these situations because these AC adapters do weigh quite a bit and they're not really adhering to the cleanest of surfaces, this basically being particle board. So make sure you use something like this. I'll have it linked below if you're interested in doing something similar for your setup. So you can see from this perspective how little of the cabling is actually exposed. Not that you'd be looking at anything from this height anyway. Of course, below you'll see it. That's our power strip there in the back corner. And from the top, this is what's most important, not a single cable in sight underneath the desk, which is what I was after. Oh, and let's not forget these new Pixio panels. So these are the next step up from the PX277 primes I was using. Again, one of those went out and these have a, a nice white frame. I chose white this time around just to, you know, change it up a bit. These are also 4K, which is great. Pixio finally makes 4K 27 inch panels. This is perfect for me. It's just what I prefer as a content creator and they're IPS, which actually saves on cost. But I know most people want OLED when it comes to 4K panels, but IPS can save you a bit of money. These won't break the bank. Whew. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride to see parts of the office enhanced and fixed that you don't typically see. This is the background. This is just kind of like the, the personal section of the room. And uh, it's usually just myself or my wife gaming on these PCs, maybe my son on the racing sim or them just playing Minecraft on the Xbox on the entertainment setup. Like I, I, I use a lot of this stuff off camera because I, I didn't want this room to just be for work. I wanted it to be kind of like a man cave, so to speak, but if the wife or someone wanted to crash up here too, they totally could. Of course, the main set, which you see in most videos, was fixed, or well, it's still being updated here and there, but it was mostly set up from the get-go because of course, it's going to be in every video. But these smaller things uh, I've just kind of put off over the last few months and it's a relief to finally have most of those addressed. And the server closet, which is right outside the office, that thing definitely needed to breathe. Those vents have actually dropped the ambient temperature in that closet by 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which in my opinion is pretty substantial. I know it's Fahrenheit and not Celsius, and well, it's not really that big a deal. Trust me, it was like a sauna in there before, and it's much closer to room temperature now that there's, you know, circulation. Thank you so much for watching, and again, coming along for the ride. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider sticking around for the next, and leaving a comment down below. My name's Greg. Thanks for fixing with me.